All right, folks, what is going on? This is episode 565 of the First and Frame Rate Show. I am VF Baller. Over here, we talk about Georgia Southern and Atlanta Falcons football. And today is going to be a pretty basic day. Nothing extra going on, nothing exciting going on for the Falcons. We're, we're picking at number eight. And the question is, you know, what do you expect from the Falcons during this draft? I mean, you're not going to hear much. Things are going to start picking up throughout the week, but just – you know, just a broad question. What are you expecting? We already seen what happened with Aaron Rodgers and the trade to the Jets. They basically swapped first round picks. I think the Jets got off pretty good on that pick or whatever the case may be. Um, the pick could, the 2024 pick could be a second rounder if Aaron Rodgers, uh, you know, play 65% of the snaps, which I think he will. I don't see why not. But nevertheless, I think the Jets got off pretty easy. You know, they're not breaking their future with this whole situation. But nevertheless, it's not about them or any other team throughout the season or throughout the league. I may throw a little bit of Georgia Southern in there, but we'll see about how that how that goes. If this is your first time here, welcome. I can be found on YouTube and Rumble. I'm also on Anchor, Stitcher, Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts. And I want to thank you guys for the support. I really, really appreciate it. The subscriber numbers are going up. The viewership is going up. And I think, you know, really that's the more important thing. More people are getting their eyes and ears on this podcast and i really really appreciate it so share this podcast let people know what we're doing over here hit that like button if you don't mind and uh we're going to get into this we're going to be picking at number eight we may move up we may move back depends on who's getting picked or whatever i already said it on record you know just to you know not to have any climatic suspense on this episode i want the falcons to pick nolan smith will they pick nolan smith probably not not at this point i mean we've we've gone so many places around his skill set and you know the the personnel that we bought in that's kin to his skill set. I'm not sure that we we're gonna pick him, but I would love for the Falcons to pick him. Now, there's also other rumblings about B. John Robinson possibly being picked number eight. There's also other rumblings saying that he won't even make it to eight. I think Nolan Smith will easily make it to eight. I don't think there's other teams before us will get to him. Jalen Carter is a guy that's you know, that's on the radar too. People are talking about that. I also heard some rumblings about the Falcons possibly picking a wide receiver. And I'm, I'm not really sure about that because I don't see any wide receivers worth the top 10 talent this this draft. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think JSN out of Ohio State is definitely a, a, a phenomenal pick. I think Jalen Hyatt is another one that's a phenomenal pick, but I don't think they're top 10, maybe late first round, you know, late first round grade. Um, possibly we can get them in the second round because even though we did get Scotty Miller and Matt Hollis, we did re-sign, um, you know, uh, Cordell Hodge. Um, there's also been sightings of Cordell Patterson playing wide receiver, which Cordell Patterson is a wide receiver at heart. I don't care what anybody says. He came in the league as a kick returner slash wide receiver. He played a little bit of running back, and he's damn good at it. But I think he's still a wide receiver at heart, and for him to be in that position, I mean, it's just more weapons. So with that being said, even though we lost Oz to Kias, it may be a situation where Cordell Patterson may not be running the ball as much. And to be quite honest, as good as he run the ball in situations, I think Cordell Patterson probably would be best suited on the outside with the Matt Collins, Kyle Pitts, John Drake, London, Scotty Miller. I think those five guys, I think that's five, John Lou Smith as well, six guys. I think those guys right there is just going to be absolutely deadly for any offense to try to cover. I mean, you know, uh, or any defense to try to cover. I mean, Desmond Ritter has the pick of the litter of who he can find to throw the ball to. And I think that's, you know, a lot of people don't like Desmond Ritter. You know, I think the guy is smart enough to make decisions to get the ball to those guys. You don't need this elite world-beating quarterback where you can get talent around a guy who just want to just make nice decisions. You don't need an elite quarterback to do it all. I don't, to be quite honest, you know, we've gotten so, and I don't want to go far with this. I think we've gotten so spoiled watching certain quarterbacks do it all and, and trying to make their receivers look better. We're, we're accustomed to that. And I think I think Desmond Ritter could possibly be that person. But right now, with him being a second year, basically going to be starting his fifth game when the season starts, I don't think we need him to do all that right now. I don't think no rookie, if we do decide to draft the rookie, which that's a possibility number eight, I don't even think a rookie should be in that situation to do that much right away. You know, so it, it, it it's a situation where with all these collective pieces coming in, we're looking at 
we we were basically looking at best player available. I know we did not touch the run the running back situation. We didn't touch it. We didn't touch on that because of the fact that we touched everywhere else. And Tyler Algier is still, you know, the the workhorse. With Cordell Patterson possibly moving out the wide receiver, like we said, I saw the video of him playing or training at wide receiver. Does Caleb Huntley come back? You know, he finished off with a with a with an injury that didn't really uh he wasn't able to go along with the season. Dame Williams was cut. So do you bring back Caleb Huntley? Um, as far as I'm concerned, I don't know if he's still on the roster or not. I don't have my roster pulled up to see. But if you do bring him back, that's actually not a bad idea. Caleb Huntley can run the ball. Caleb Huntley is a team player. He he's a guy that you would want on your team. If you actually hear the way he sounds on the sideline, rah rah people up, and he backs it up with his with his game on the field, that's the type of guy you would want on the team. So if he comes back, then now we really don't know what we're gonna do. B. John Robinson is a guy that people were talking about, and they're like, you know, he's like a generational talent. You don't pass up on that. I mean, do you really, you know? I mean, spend like 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 when you do have a Tyler Alger, do you do do you bring another running back like that? I mean, I'm not I'm not really sure. I'm not saying that is a right or wrong. It's, I don't think it's right or wrong answer to that, um, per se, because the the more the merrier. But honestly, like, do you really? I think that to me, I feel like that'd be more of a luxury pick. Like, say if a guy of that caliber was in the late second round or something, because I mean, if you didn't have Tyler Alger, it'd be a no it'd be a no brainer. Obviously, it'd be a no-brainer. But when you have a guy like Tyler Al, just like, do you really need somebody like that? Because to me personally, I would think to offset what Tyler Algier can do, I would like to get a running back that can catch out the backfield or you can sneak him in the run between the tackles every now and then. I think, you know, and I'm not trying to, you know, don't, I know this might rub some people the wrong way, but don't get this, don't don't take this the wrong way. But I think in this situation, a guy like a Jacquez Rogers or a Warwick Dunn or um oh, what was the other guy I think that got cut? He wore number 25 as well. He came from Louisville. Can't remember his name. Um those type of running backs would be perfect to offset what uh what Tyler Algier could do. Kind of like the TJ Duckett. Warwick Dunn situation, you know, it, it'd be something like that. But I, I'm not sure if that's uh, Coach Arthur Smith's philosophy. But I, I'm not against that. I'm absolutely not against that. If we were to go that route, um, nevertheless, if everything is on the up and up and everything goes well with this draft, um, we're going to have a very, very, very stacked team going in. I mean, you got some guys here that's already here that been signed. You're going to get what. What I think we got one, two, three. I think we got like seven or eight picks in the draft. I think we got up to nine. I, mean, I can't remember. But nevertheless, you got all those players that's going to come in. And we're going to be able to sign all of them because we still got a good bit of cap space. So you, you're you going to have all these guys coming in. And it's, it's basically you're playing with house money. You, you look at the NFC South. Uh, I mean, I was talking about the NFC South in the other episode. Like, we can easily win the NFC South. We could... Right now, based on how things look, we could sweep the NFC South easily. I mean, I know Saints fans are going to talk. The Buccaneers don't know what their fans don't know what they're going to do because they got Baker Mayfield. They, you know, Tom Brady's not there. You got this girl, no players that's ready to leave and want to be traded. And you got Bryce Young. And I still believe that the Panthers are going to pick Bryce Young. You got Bryce Young coming in to this situation. And they don't have DJ Moore. They don't have really a running back. So they, they do have a decent defense. Don't get me wrong. The Panthers still have a pretty good defense. But when you look at the other three teams at NFC South, we're the ones that's making all the moves. We're the ones that's making the majority of the moves. We're the ones that's, is 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 uh putting the team together that that's really that's really the best team in the division. And with us picking at number eight, that makes it even better because you know what you're getting with the Panthers. And I mean the Buccaneers and the Saints, they I think they pick later on, and you know what you're getting. We already got the front seven to set up to give Bryce Young hell. We already got the front seven that's going to try our best to give, you know, um, David Carr or Derek Carr. I can't remember. I keep getting those two mixed up. Derek Carr and and, and uh, Baker Mayfield hell. You know, Bryce Young could move a little bit. Those other two guys are statues. And we have a defensive coordinator for the Saints that knows what those guys are going to do. 
it, 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 it it, it, it is setting up for us to be in a lovely position. So what I think we're going to do with that pick, honestly, this is my gut feel. I said it before, and I want to know your feedback as well. If you're on the YouTubes or if you're on the Rumbles, if you're on the podcast, if you're on the podcast avenue, go and check me out on Twitter at VF Baller. Find out, you know, just let me know what you guys think. If you hit me up on Twitter, um, but uh, the guys that are in the comment section, Please let me know what you guys think. I really think that we're going to go defense once again. It's either we're going to go with uh, Nolan Smith or Christian Gonzalez. Christian Gonzalez may not fall to eight, but I think it's going to be one of those two guys, especially after we got rid of Casey Hayward. We did get Okuda. We did get Mike Hughes. Yeah, don't get me wrong, but I don't think Okuda or Mike Hughes, maybe Mike Hughes is going to fill that position where Isaiah Oliver works. I think Christian Gonzalez could fit that mold of of Isaiah Oliver. They're almost about the same size. Will he be there the whole time? I don't think you don't pick a number. You don't think you pick a number uh, a cornerback at number eight to be that kind of guy. Maybe Jeff Okuda could be there, or nevertheless. But I think it's going to be one of those two guys. Jalen Carter is a distant third, distant third. B. John Robinson is a distant fourth. But I I feel like it's just my gut feeling. I'm not you know I'm. I'm, y'all maybe think I'm talking crazy, but I really believe that Nola Smith may be is going to be the guy. They're going to pick him up. I mean, dude's a freak of nature because I think he's going to be picking up where, um, I want to say Caden, not Caden Ellis, but uh, Rashawn Evans. He's going to pick up that 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 slot that Rashawn Evans was in, or maybe Kielkowski. You know, one of those guys. I know we got Caden Ellis. We brought a couple of guys in. And at linebacker, but I don't. I think those guys are depth guys. I don't think those guys are going to be on the field. I think it's going to be Troy Anderson, Caden Ellis, and uh, just another linebacker. I can't remember his name, but nevertheless, I think you, you will probably get a Troy and or not. I mean Lorenzo Carter. Those those guys, those three's right there, and then you bring in Nola Smith to be the situational guy. Probably end up being your edge rusher on the other side. Calias Campbell leaves after a year. He's going to be filling that spot. Arnold Ebiquete and Nolan Smith on the other side. I, I think that's where we're going. But like I said, Nolan Smith, Christian Gonzalez, Bijan Robinson, and uh, uh, no, yeah, that's what I said. And Nolan Smith, Christian Gonzalez, Bijan Robinson, Jalen Carter. Those are the four I think that we're going to go with. You know, one, two, three, and four. So that that's just what I feel. So let me know what you guys think. I think this team is set up very well and the draft is setting up very well for them as well. Um, we don't know. We, we may even move back with it, but if we don't, those are my picks. Let me know what you guys think. If you like this comment, if you like this, com- Ooh, I'm sorry. I was trying to talk too fast. If you like this podcast, uh, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, let me know what you guys think. Um, you already know where I stand. I already told you where I stand. This is where I'm going to be at. And uh, hopefully we'll see how it plays out. Either way, there, there's no winners or losers here. I mean, you're going to have people here that's just going to be negative just to be negative. You still got people ragging on our quarterback. You got some people that are feeling like this team is not all the way the way it is. Some people are hedging their bets, saying that, oh, the team is ritter proof. Like bringing talent to a team is a bad thing, but I, I don't know what to tell you. I can be found on YouTube and Rumble, also Anchor Stitch, Spotify, Apple, Google Podcast, website, firstandframerates.com. I'm going to get out of here. You guys enjoy the rest of the evening. I really appreciate y'all. I really, really do. All right, y'all. Y'all take it easy, and y'all be blessed. Peace.